Whenever you're ready, Sam. Oh, okay. Let me just get rid of this. Okay. Good morning. Uh, I am Sam Sokolov. I am the executive director of the Serve New Mexico Commission. Thank you for joining us today for an introduction of AmeriCorps. This is in association with the release of our request for applications 22631-7004-0089, also known as the formula application for the Serve New Mexico Commission. Uh, thanks to Stacy Johnson for facilitating this morning's session. Stacy, next slide, please. So we are going to talk about the elements regarding uh, the AmeriCorps application. All communication regarding this RFA must be sent in writing to my attention that this email address. Next slide. So a little bit about us. Uh, the CERD New Mexico Commission's mission is to engage citizens of New Mexico of all ages and backgrounds in community-based service. This service is meant to address New Mexico's human educational, environmental, public safety, health, housing, and other needs to achieve direct and beneficial results. Next slide. We are the body that administers AmeriCorps funding for the state of New Mexico. AmeriCorps was created in 1993 through the signing of the National and Community Service Trust Act. And this is the nation's largest grant making entity supporting national service. Next slide. AmeriCorps is the federal agency connecting individuals and organizations through service and volunteering to tackle the nation's most pressing challenges. We are not unique. There are 52 state service commissions just like ours across the United States and territories. These commissions like ours are charged with awarding AmeriCorps grants to local organizations to help meet critical needs. Next slide. So AmeriCorps, is meant to connect individuals and organizations to help communities tackle their toughest challenges. AmeriCorps sends people power and funding to communities across the country. These are along the lines of focus areas, which include disaster response, addressing the opioid crisis, education. These are a few causes where AmeriCorps members have stepped up in New Mexico and across the country to strengthen their community. Next slide. The AmeriCorps vision. For decades, AmeriCorps has worked to make service to others an indispensable part of the American experience. Through a nation's most trying times, AmeriCorps has come together to help those in need. Next slide. Every year, our AmeriCorps members are administered the AmeriCorps Pledge, in which they commit to get things done, which is the motto of AmeriCorps, for America, for America and for New Mexico, to make our communities and people safer, smarter, and healthier. So this year, we uh, inducted around 400 AmeriCorps members who all took these pledges, this pledge rather. Next slide. So we were established as a commission uh, back in April of 2013. That's around the same time that we came to the New Mexico Department of Workforce Solutions. And that is our administrative host. Next slide. So our commission is chaired by Bernardino, uh, Bernardino de Lago. Our commissioners are appointed by the governor. There's a minimum of 18 uh, commissioners and a maximum of 25 commissioners. They represent different sectors across the state, including business, government, nonprofit, and the volunteer sector, as well as tribal representation. So we have a diverse group of commissioners who uh, every year and every day help us with our, with our mission. Next slide. We have a commitment as well to justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. We strive to represent all of the people and cultures of New Mexico. In our work in grant making, we prioritize the principles of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. We are seeking dynamic partners through our fundraising, or sorry, through our grant making, who are committed to addressing the changing needs of our communities. Next slide. We have a small commission staff. It's myself and two program officers, Dana Howard and Brad Nipper. Next slide. So a little bit about the national service umbrella, which all falls under the category of AmeriCorps. So we're gonna talk about briefly four different components of the AmeriCorps family. Next slide. So AmeriCorps State National, that's what our commission oversees. 
Our purpose is to engage in strategic grant making to support organizations that see service as a solution to local and national challenges and create powerful member experiences that result in lifelong civic engagement. We are the boots on the ground part of AmeriCorps direct service. Next slide. VISTA, Volunteers in Service to America. This is designed specifically to fight poverty. VISTAs perform indirect service, not direct service like us, which means they help build the capacity of organizations to deliver valuable direct services to people living in poverty. So VISTAs typically create new programs, write grants, and recruit volunteers. Next slide. AmeriCorps seniors. For decades, volunteers age 55 and above have been serving their communities through AmeriCorps senior programs. Each year, AmeriCorps seniors engage more than 200,000 older adults in volunteer service through foster grandparents, senior companions, and RSVP programs, enriching the lives of the volunteers and benefiting their communities. Next slide. And then we've got NCCC, AmeriCorps NCCC, a full-time service program that covers lodging and travel expenses, allowing young adults to serve on a team and make an impact in communities across the country while gaining valuable leadership skills. If you are interested in those three arms of national service, VISTA, AmeriCorps NCCC, and Senior Corps, you can always reach out to me. And I'll be happy to contact you with the program people, the staff members, who can give you more information. Next slide. And there's also a great resource online. If you're going to go to this address, you can also figure out which stream of service makes the most sense for your agency. Next slide. So again, our commission only funds direct service programs, boots on the ground. Next slide. Quick overview, this is a little outdated, but this gives you a sense of how all of these streams of service come into play in New Mexico. Over 700 service sites, more than 4,000 AmeriCorps, senior, AmeriCorps seniors and AmeriCorps members serving, more than $20 million in AmeriCorps federal resources that come to the communities, and 25 plus million dollars in AmeriCorps scholarships earned since 1994. And we'll talk a little bit uh, in, in a bit about what that the education award looks like and how that's administered. Next slide. So we went through a process, AmeriCorps as a body, went through a process of regionalization a couple of years ago. We now are under the auspices of the Mountain Region. So the AmeriCorps Mountain Region Office oversees national service programs serving in AmeriCorps VISTA and Senior Corps. This covers Arizona, Idaho, Montana, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming. So it's a nice way of just sort of creating more collaborative opportunities for AmeriCorps streams serving in our region. Next slide. So AmeriCorps programs, our AmeriCorps programs through the commission are designed to deliver direct service. And examples could be programs in which children are tutored as part of a literacy uh, program, a program that provides relief services to communities affected by disaster or provide health information to vulnerable populations, programs that engage members in community cleanup projects or neighborhood watch programs, and programs that support after school programming. This is just sort of a sample of kind of, of the sort of programs that we fund as a commission. Next slide. So, Every year we distribute approximately $3 million of federal funding. These are allocated to create AmeriCorps programs or sustain AmeriCorps programs throughout the state of New Mexico. And again, our charge is specifically in New Mexico. We do not support programs that operate in multi-states. Next slide. Typically the grant awards, they can range from 45,000 to $800,000 and above. It depends entirely on the program design. Next slide. Our grants are intended to provide funding to high quality programs that are developed by an applicant who designs a set of activities that demonstrate an evidence-based or evidence-informed approach to creating community impact and solving community problems by engaging individuals in service as AmeriCorps members. That's the heart of what we do. We want to find viable solutions to community problems that can be achieved by deploying X number of AmeriCorps members. Next slide. 
So our grants, they include an allotment of member position and funds that are directly tied to the specific number of members. They are solely for program expenses and not for general organizational expenses. We don't do uh, you know, undesignated funding. They are just designated, our funds are designated specifically for the operations of an AmeriCorps program. They provide partial funding to support the AmeriCorps projects and programs, and grant recipients must contribute cash or in-kind match funding to support the project. We'll talk a little bit about that in just a bit. Next slide. So who can apply for an AmeriCorps grant? Public, private, or faith-based nonprofit organizations, as well as local or state agencies are eligible to apply for AmeriCorps state and national funding. If you are a business, a for-profit entity, you are not eligible to apply for our funds. Next slide. So little uh, overview of just kind of our traditional focus areas. This is where most of our programs fall in. Number one would be education. Our members support students in public, private, and charter schools. Their service improves attendance and engagement, increases high school graduation rates, and expands college enrollment. Next slide. Economic opportunities. Our programs serve as a pathway to employment opportunities and help develop vital work skills. Again, we are under the Department of Workforce Solutions for a good reason. And we want our members to uh, provide financial literacy training and connect people to jobs. Next slide. Healthy Futures, AmeriCorps programs build the capacity of food banks, com combat the opioid crisis, tackle homelessness, and address food insecurity. Next slide. Veterans and military families. AmeriCorps connects veterans and their families to education opportunities, jobs, and the benefits they've earned. Many veterans also choose AmeriCorps, understandably, to continue to serve their country. Next slide. Environmental stewardship. And AmeriCorps members serve on projects that cover thousands of acres of public lands, including many with the National Park Service. These members help conserve national or natural habitats, protect clean air and water and build miles of public trails. Next slide. New AmeriCorps focus areas. I think everyone would appreciate efforts to help local communities recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Applicants are now able to propose programming in any CNCS, that's Corporation for National Community Service focus area, to aid communities as they recover from COVID-19 and programs that actively engage in removing structural racial inequities, advancing racial equality, and increasing opportunity in order to achieve sustainable change in communities. Next slide. So what are the responsibilities and expectations if you receive our funding? We expect that number one, you'll design or replicate a successful intervention to address a community need. By replicate, I mean that it's possible that there's already a program out there that looks like what you're thinking about when it comes to uh, operating AmeriCorps members or, or being able to deploy AmeriCorps members. There's a possibility that a strong model already exists for you to emulate. Number two is to track and report performance measures that capture program outputs and outcomes. We want to see that the program is succeeding. We want to see that you're meeting your mission and your goals. And again, responsibility for contributing match funding to support the project. We want to make sure that the grantee has skin in the game. Next slide. So if you do receive funding, what are your responsibilities to your members? Well, this would be your responsibility to recruit AmeriCorps members, to interview them, to find the right people for these positions, to select them, to train them, and to supervise them, to make sure that they are going to have the best possible member experience, and they will be the right people to help you achieve the goals of your program. Next slide. So let's take a quick look at what's happening in New Mexico. Next slide. We've got programs that include the NAC Inspired School Networks. This is the Indigenous Educator Corps, a program that's been in operation now for about five years. Next slide. We have Rocky Mountain Youth Corp, which is our oldest and largest subgrantee, which is under the, uh, the, the environmental stewardship focus area. Next slide. Roadrunner Food Bank. 
These are the Seed Corps members. Uh, the Seed Corps program providing nutrition education to address health benefits of eating fresh fruits and vegetables and providing information to people struggling with poverty and hunger to understand where and how to access public benefits and increasing awareness of existing local resources. Next slide. Mandy's Farm, which allows, uh, which are sorry, that assists service recipients in navigating government benefits, supporting families in their roles as full time caregivers, and providing opportunities for adults with developmental disabilities to participate in career exploration and training. Next slide. Teacher America, which is our one professional core program, full time teachers and low income native communities across Northwest and Central New Mexico. New, uh, Teacher America operates pretty much in every state across the country. Next slide. Eco servants in uh, these are members serving in either Lincoln or Taro County, helping improve resources, sustainably create trails, removing noxious weeds, and improving parks, all under the auspices of environmental stewardship. Next slide. Families and Youth Inc. in Las Cruces. These are serving children and youth placed at risk through a universal approach, providing tutoring, mentoring, and other social services. Another longstanding AmeriCorps program. Next slide. Boys and Girls Club of Central New Mexico. This is a mentoring and education program in Central New Mexico, uh, the Albuquerque area. Next slide. And Dream Tree Project, which is in Taos. And its consortium of partners, they believe that increased outreach and coordinated pathway navigation are necessary in Taos County. So AmeriCorps members are connecting community members with services to improve their lives. And this program has been in existence for going on three years. Next slide. So if you're an AmeriCorps member, these are some of the benefits. Number one, you get a challenging and enriching career experience. You have an experience that's going to encourage your professional development. You have an experience that puts you in contact with a network of professionals and mentors. And you will ideally be serving in a culture of diversity, inclusion, and civic engagement that will enrich your life for years to come. Next slide. Member terms. There's a variety of different member terms to consider that include full time all the way down to minimum time. And this is included in our RFA that you can look at. Next slide. So AmeriCorps members, they also receive as part of their service, a living, a living allowance, which is not a salary. It's a stipend an AmeriCorps member receives during a term of service. It's not a wage. It's not calculated on an hourly basis. Uh, next slide, please. And you can see the variety of, uh, of how the, the way that these stipends are administered based on your term of service. Next slide, please. You also, if you're an AmeriCorps member and you successfully complete your term of service, you may be eligible for an Eli Siegel AmeriCorps Education Award. This is an award that is tied to the value of the Pell Grant. A member has up to seven years after his or her term of service to use the Education Award. And these awards can be transferred to children, stepchildren, foster children, grandchildren, or step-grandchildren. Next slide. And you can see here how the education award is administered based on your term of service. Next slide. So when you are a member, there are things that you cannot do. We call these prohibited activities. I'm not gonna go through each bullet point, but you can see it can include things such as getting involved in influencing legislation. It could be engaging in partisan political activities during service time. It could be conducting a voter registration drive, using corporation funds to conduct voter registration drives, or providing abortion services or referrals. We want our AmeriCorps members to be engaged, involved members of, of their communities, to be civic participants. But when it comes to serving our activities on service time, when they're clocking hours in quotes, these are activities that they are not allowed to perform. Next slide. So let's talk about the elements of the application itself, which is now live on our website. Next slide. So our funding year is equals to program year. So that would start September 1st, 2022, running through August 31st, 2023. Next slide. 
So we release two RFAs, two requests for applications a year. We have one that's called the formula pool, which is open to us right now. And then we also have the competitive pool, which is generally in the uh, released in the early, the early fall of the year. Next slide. So a competitive, it's called competitive because you, when you apply for this, you are competing with applications from across the country. The commission makes funding recommendations, but it's the corporation that makes the ultimate decisions about who receives funding. It's a highly selective process. This is generally for established AmeriCorps programs that have three plus years of successful operation. Next slide. So formula is an annual process that's open to all eligible applicants as funding availability allows. It's called formula because the amount of the allocation to our commission is based on population size and that shifts every single year. So we have as a commission full discretion after our process of our selection process of deciding who receives funding. Next slide. What goes into an application? These are the key, the key elements. Number one is the executive summary. Number two is the program design. Number three is your organizational capability. Number four is cost effectiveness and budget adequacy. And lastly, performance measures. Next slide. So we grade according to these categories, program design, 50 points, organizational capability, 25 points, and then cost effectiveness and budget, 25 points. Next slide. Member service year. So this is some of that AmeriCorps terminology that you need to familiarize yourself if you are going to apply for an AmeriCorps grant. Member service year is the equivalent of one full-time service position. It's used to calculate the cost to the corporation of the commission of your AmeriCorps program. These funds are contingent on the number of MSYs requested by the program. The total MSYs of program requests depend on the number and type of slots and the AmeriCorps member positions included in a particular program design. Applicants may request no less than 10 member slots or five MSYs when it comes to our application. Next slide. So for your executive summary, this is a key piece of your application. This is the time in which you tell us as a commission what you propose to do, where, with whom, and with how much. Next slide. Next, we expect a theory of change that will clearly describe the design of your program, the target population, and the roles of AmeriCorps members, and if applicable, the kind of volunteers that you're going to be leveraging for the project. The proposed outcomes articulated in the application narrative represent meaningful progress in addressing the community need. And we want you to be able to explain how AmeriCorps members will contribute significant and unique contributions to existing efforts. We want to know that your intervention, your proposed intervention, is likely to lead to the outcomes identified in the applicant's theory of change. Next slide. The theory of change. This identifies the need, the intervention, and the intended outcome. We want to make sure that the need is clearly articulated, that it includes why the issue exists and the severity of the need. The intervention is of the how, the what, the when, and where members are going to provide the service, along with research that will lead to proposed outcome. And the intended outcome is described as being successful as a result of the intervention. We want to know why AmeriCorps members, not staff, not, not somebody else, is going to be the best solution to the community problem. Next slide. Performance measures. So all applicants are required to submit at least one aligned performance measure to track the program's primary service activity. You'll find the right fit for your program and organization as a whole. And this is included in the application packet online. Next slide. Evidence. America, uh, applicants will be assessed by providing evidence that their program proposed intervention will lead to the outcomes identified in the theory of change. Applicants must fully describe how they meet the requirement of their tier. And these tiers are pre-preliminary evidence, preliminary evidence, moderate evidence, and strong evidence. Research needs to focus on a specific program or intervention. We want current evidence in support of your proposed intervention. Next slide. Member experience. We want to make sure, or we want to be 
uh, uh, persuaded as reviewers that the applicant is going to provide AmeriCorps members with an opportunity to gain skills or as a result of the training and service that can be utilized and valued by future employers. We want to know that you're going to recruit AmeriCorps members from the geographic and demogra demographic communities in which they operate, the programs operate. And we want to make sure that the applicant will foster you an inclusive service culture where different value, uh, backgrounds, talents, and capabilities are welcomed and leveraged. So this is all scorable elements of the AmeriCorps application. Next slide. Organizational background and staffing. In short, we want to make sure that you have the means to be able to successfully administer an AmeriCorps program. So the application will allow you to describe that you will have the structure, the staff necessary for implementing this program, as well as a strong monitoring and oversight plan to prevent and detect non-compliance and enforce compliance at the grantee, sub-grantee, and service site locations. We want to make sure that you've got the tools to be able to make this work. Next slide. So match requirement. So in year number one, there will be a match requirement of 24% that goes all the way up to 50% and above in subsequent operational years. We do not want match to be a deal breaker when it comes to the applicants. We are, are pretty, we as a corporation, as a commission, are pretty uh, flexible when it comes to whether that's cash or in kind. We can look at all sorts of alternatives when it comes to match. But we again want to make sure that you have skin in the game as a sub grantee of the commission. Next slide. So we operate our grants according to either cost reimbursement or fixed amount. So state AmeriCorps applications submitted to the commission can be structured on a cost reimbursement or fixed amount basis. We will not provide both types of grants for the same project in one fiscal year. So it's either or. Next slide. Planning grants. So we are also offering in the current RFA a planning grant up to $45,000. If you feel like you've got a good idea for a program, but you're not quite ready to, to run an operational AmeriCorps program, we'll give you a year to work with us as a commission to design and plan your program. Uh, and then with an expectation that you'll be applying for operational funding coming the next year. So there's some benchmarks along the way to make sure that you're spending those funds appropriately and you're showing the commission progress in being able to design your operational program. And so the project period is for no more than one year, maximum of $45,000. Next. So we wanna make sure as well that you're submitting a budget that is understandable, that is mathematically correct, and that the proposed costs are allowable, reasonable, and allocable to the award. We will take a close look at your budget, making sure that you're also in compliance with the budget instructions, and that you're submitting a match, uh, a match expectation with adequate information to support the amount written. Next slide. So we need you to make sure that you complete the budget and ensure that your indirect cost rate is included and correct that you're going to identify the non-AmeriCorps slash CMCS funding and resources necessary to support the project and indicate the amount of non-CMCS resource commitments, type of commitments and cash or kind, the source of those commitments and if the commitments are proposed or secured. So the budget application information is all online. Next slide. Characteristics of success. These typically are programs that focus on measurable outcomes. These are programs that offer innovative strategies and programs uh, that engage more citizens in national service or volunteerism, programs that leverage private and public resources successfully, programs that focus on service as a solution and instill the ethic of service in AmeriCorps members and volunteers, and programs that demonstrate capacity, commitment, and administrative leadership. Next slide. Common pitfalls for why an AmeriCorps program does not succeed, mission drift, failure to adhere to regulations, lack of significant commitment on the part of the organization, duplication and supplantation, i.e. using members inappropriately, viewing AmeriCorps members as cheap employees, that falls into the category of duplication and supplantation, and not understanding that members are not the main beneficiaries. And what we're looking at is community impact through service. Next slide. The application is now online and live. 
and it's available here. You just go to the Serve New Mexico website. Next slide. The review process. So we have reviewers that will be looking over all these applications. We are looking at a minimum of 80 points scored in which a program or rather an application is deemed to be responsive to the, condi the conditions of the application. So 80 points and above is the threshold that we look at for consideration for funding. Next slide. Important application dates. Please remember March 17th is the notice of intent to apply. Deadline to submit questions in writing, April 1st. Response to written questions all by April 8th. And the deadline for full applications is Friday, April 15th by four o'clock mountain time. The application process requires online submission via e-grants, which is the electronic system used by AmeriCorps. If you do not currently have an e-grants account, I highly, highly recommend that you do one, you establish one ASAP because e-grants can be uh, challenging. So please, 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 by all means, don't wait too long to set up your email, or rather your e-grants account. Next slide. So once you become a program, that's when the real fun begins. That's when you'll be responsible for the promotion of the program, recruiting members, recruiting host sites and supervisors, and then doing the training and orientation of your members. And the commission is here to help every step of the way. Next slide. In between RFAs, we can openly consult with an applicant when an application is not open. We can have conversations, my team and I, about program design, about funding, about budgeting, about member recruitment, all those elements. Once an RFA is open, we have to adhere to the, uh, the procurement protocols, which means that communication has to be limited. Next slide. So, we can also, once you become familiar with our application requirements in between our phase, you can always just send us a brief background of your agency, including your current staff size and operating budget, an overview of the project or issue your community is facing, description of how you think AmeriCorps members would be performing to uh, the service to address a problem or issue, and a description of the partners you would potentially be engaging for this program. It's a great way for us as a commission to work with you as a potential applicant on program design and thinking about what those elements would look like. Next slide. So questions need to be submitted to me within the, uh, the, procure the procurement period as specified on our landing site, our landing page for the RFA at this address. Okay, at this time, the presentation will conclude. Thank you very much for your time.